Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover inheritance, operator overloading, and polymorphism. All right, so whenever we create a class, we can inherit all of the fields and methods from another class, and this is referred to as inheritance. So let's go and first create a class that we will inherit from. And because we are inheriting from it, that is going to be known, or animal in this situation, is going to be known as the superclass, while the class that inherits is going to be called the subclass. So everything's going to be the same. We're going to initialize our animals whenever they are created. Let's make sure we call it init. There we go. And what's going to be passed inside of it? Well, I'm going to say birth type and sort of simulate a type of animal in kind of a scientific type of way. So I'm going to say birth type and I'm going to mark this as unknown whenever we first start off. I'm going to say appearance and also mark that as unknown. Unknown. And then we will also have blooded, whether it's going to be warm or cold blooded or not. And again, mark that as unknown. So we have our default values inside of here. Now I need to assign these values. So I'm going to say birth type is equal to whatever the birth type was that they passed in, of course and go and assign all of our other different values that are passed inside of here. So appearance is equal to the appearance passed in. Make sure we spell appearance correct. And blooded. So blooded is equal to whatever was passed in. All right, so we have everything initialized. Now we're going to create our getter functions. So again, we're going to say property, and this just means that any single time somebody comes in and says that they want to get the birth type, that they are going to call this function right here and execute whatever's inside of it. And this is just going to be really simple. We're just going to return our value and birth type and Let's do the same thing for appearance. And let's create birth type setter. So again, at, and then you're going to put birth type and setter and define birth type. And the birth type can be passed over. And then we'll just say self. We could go and verify that this was an OK value, but I'm just going to keep it simple here. Birth type and set that. We're going to do the same things for appearance as well as blooded. So let's just save ourselves some time and paste that information in. So we're going to say appearance and appearance again. And then also set appearance here, and appearance here, and uh, again and again and again. So appearance, appearance, appearance. All right, so we have all those set inside of there. And then let's do the same thing for blooded. So jump in there, and this will be blooded, and blooded, and blooded, and blooded, and blooded. And got them almost all set. And there we go. All right, so we have all the getters and setters created for those different animal attributes. Now what I want to do is set up what is going to happen if the user tries to print our object. You can define that with str or string in this situation. So let's define what happens if they try to print an object. We are going to return a, and this is going to be the type of object that is, is what we'll return here, is, and then we'll put its birth type inside of there, it is 
and we'll put appearance inside of that and then it is and blooded whether it's going to be warm or cold blooded all right so we'll say format and I want to go and get the type of object it is so I can just do that with self directly inside of here and we're going to be able to see what type of objects we're working with so and how you get that is with type self and name and then we'll just follow that up with our birth type and self appearance and then finally blooded all right so there we go and now what I want to do is take this generic animal and I want to create a mammal class that's going to inherit from animal and then go and make any changes that I'd like to make so let's just go and go class mammal and if you want to inherit all of the attributes and capabilities or fields and methods from the animal class you just put animal inside of parentheses again I'm going to initialize all of my mammals that are created and it's going to get past the same types of stuff so it's going to get birth type and appearance and blooded but I'd like to also add another attribute which is whether the mammals nurse whenever they're young so I'm going to have birth type and in this one I'm going to say born alive appearance and I'm going to say hair or fur blooded is going to be warm blooded and do mammals nurse their young the answer to that is going to be true now what I can do is I can go and have the super class initialize all the fields that the mammal and the super class animal have so what are those things birth type appearance and blooded so how we call for the super class to initialize those things is we say animal and call the initialization function inside of animal and all we need to do is pass in our object and then birth type and just let it handle everything just make sure that you only pass in things that are in the animal class though so it wouldn't be able to handle the nursing young part that we added inside of here so we'll have to initialize that right inside of here so we'll say nurse young is equal to what was passed inside of here and there we go now what we can do is go and create the getters and setters for nurse young everything's going to be the same so I might as well just copy that so I'm going to copy it and paste that down inside of here so all we need to do is nurse young and then set that for all of the different values we have and nurse young and nurse young all right so we have nurse young in there in all those areas and then what else can we do here well let's say we will also want to change or overwrite our string function we have here so let's just go and copy it and make changes to it and this is called overwriting a method so we can call our super function and that's probably going to be easier to do so let's just get rid of this all right so we'll overwrite this but we'll still use our super version of string and how you do that the animal version of our string function is just go call super and then the function you want to call which is the str function that we created up there put the parentheses inside of there and then we're going to add in the additional things that we know about mammals and it is and then the value for nurse young they nurse their young and then just go into format and all we'll need to do for here is go and call nurse young everything this super function is going to handle outputting all the additional information now let's say we want to expand on this and we want to create another class 
that's called reptile. We also want to inherit from our animal class and define our initialization function. So initialize and how we are going to change this is we're still going to have birth type, appearance, and blooded just like we had before. Only put one self in there obviously. So for our birth type we're going to have it be listed as born in an egg or born alive. The appearance is going to be equal to dry scales and blooded is going to be equal to cold blooded. Again, we're going to call our animal initialization function and have it initialize everything that's in both the reptile class as well as the animal class. So, pass in our object. It can handle birth type and it can handle appearance and it can handle blooded. And now we'll come down inside of here and define our main function. So we'll say main and we can pass in, well let's go and create animal1 is equal to and let's say we only want to pass in and set one of the values. We can do that. We could say born alive like that and it will set the defaults for all the other ones as you'll see. Well we can just come in and go print animal1 and birth type then let's call our main function to test that out and you can see born alive shows up inside of there. We're also going to be able to use all of the other defaults and also if they go and try to print the object just have that automatically output all the information for us. As you can see a animal is born alive it is unknown it is unknown. Okay so let's fill that in and you can see animal here where that comes from is right here where we said that we wanted to get the type of animal and print its name. That is this guy right here. So that's how you can get your class name if you would like. Let's go in here and do a little bit more complicated stuff however. Let's go and let's create a mammal and just call it without passing anything inside of it. We can then go print mammal1 and as you may guess it's going to give us a whole bunch of default values. A mammal is born alive it is hair or fur, it is warm-blooded, and it is true they nurse their young. I guess I should have said it has. Let's go correct that. And it has, and that would be it has right here. Let's see if it looks better now. It has hair. It has unknown. Okay, so that works. So let's go and do that for the other ones. And we can go mammal1 and get all the different types associated with it. So birth type and we're also going to be able to get appearance and we can also get individually blooded and we can also come in and get Nurse Young. Let's do a couple more here. Let's create a reptile and we can go and print all that information out as well. So let's just copy these guys here, paste those inside of there, and then we'll just change this to reptile 1 instead of mammal 1. And we can see how those all change. And there you can see, printed out all the information about our mammals as well as all the information about our reptiles. And that brings us to the concept of polymorphism. Now polymorphism in Python is going to work differently from other languages in that functions accept basically any object and then just expect that the object is going to provide the needed method. Polymorphism in Python really isn't anything to dwell on. Just know that if you call a function for an object that the method just needs to exist for that object to work. Polymorphism, on the other hand, is a big deal in other programming languages that are statically typed, but because Python is dynamically typed, 
which is type is defined whenever a value is assigned. Polymorphism really doesn't matter in that situation. All right, so there is an overview of inheritance and all that it can provide for you and the capabilities and how we can create rather complicated systems. And in the next part of the tutorial series, we're going to cover something really neat, which is magic methods. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise.